Well, this afternoon's project is going to be upgrading my solar power system here in my garden shed. Now, this is kind of a cobbled together system that I've sort of just pieced together with used bits and pieces over the years. I've got a, a rich solar 20 amp MPPT charge controller, a couple of eBay purchased valence uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Each one of these is 138 amp hours, so they've got a decent amount of capacity. And then I've got a two kilowatt modified sine wave inverter. And to keep the battery charged on my lawn tractor, I'm using this DC to DC charge controller. And so this just uses the voltage from the uh, batteries and is uh, basically a, a charger to keep the battery up on my lawn tractor. So uh, outside I have a single 100 watt Renogy panel. You can see right there. Now over the years, I've gone through two different solar panels, but I've had the system installed for I don't know, 10, 15 years or something, and it was kind of just experimental at first, but uh, I've come to rely on it a bit to keep that lawn tractor battery charged. And also, um, you know, it gives me a, a 15 amp circuit in there to run my uh, chain grinder for my chainsaws. And also I have a lighting circuit in there that's on a motion sensor. So whenever someone opens a door, it kicks on all the 12 volt LED lights in there and turns on the inverter. Uh, the thing is, I've, I've come to rely on it, and I've never had a problem with it keeping up, but uh, the Starlink setup that I'm using now uses more power than that single 100-watt uh, panel can provide. Uh, basically, it uses about 100 watts 24-7, and obviously, no special math is needed. A single 100-watt panel uh, produces less than 100 watts here, especially during the winter, and it only produces it for, uh, you know, just the daylight hours. So. I purchased two more 100 watt panels. So we're gonna put uh, three 100 watt panels up on the roof. And then I got this uh, great solar rail type mounting system that's good for four panels. Now, this didn't come with any instructions. And uh, I don't know, it's not that complicated, but it doesn't even show on their website, this, this product doesn't. And so it, it did take me about 15 minutes here to figure out what all these bits and pieces were used for. But I think I got it nailed down now. So these are uh, like under shingle mount, um, I don't know, uh, flashing pieces here, flashing mounts. Basically you locate a rafter and uh, take this piece right here and you set it right over the top of the rafter. Then there's some lag bolts here. You run the lag bolt straight down through the center to anchor this down to the surface of the roof. And then you take this piece, slide it under the row of shingles above, pop it down over the top of the piece right here. This is your mounting bracket. Then you screw this on right here to anchor the mounting bracket down. Once you got that there, you take this rail and it's got uh, you know it's got some ridges right here that mesh with the ridges on the uh, on the side of this L bracket. And there you go, it goes right there. There's a bolt that slides in there, just like this. You bolt this thing down and uh, there you have it. Uh, then once you've got the rail installed, basically you've got these end pieces right here and then the center pieces here. So the panel basically sits in here this T-shaped piece goes in between two panels, and these uh, kind of L-shaped pieces go on the edge of the panels. And so I'm just gonna be installing three, I'm gonna install the existing panel I have up there and then two additional ones today. And probably won't get it finished today, certainly not before dark, but at least maybe I can get all these mounts up there. I also picked up this uh, cable like uh, entry gland right here from Amazon. And I'm not gonna put this on the roof. I don't see a reason to add another penetration in the roof that could possibly leak. I'm gonna mount this either under the eave, probably sideways on a bird block, or maybe on the end wall up under the, uh, uh, up under the soffit. We'll see, uh, I'm not really sure which. I'm kind of leaning toward the bird block because that's uh, definitely a foolproof location that definitely won't leak or cause any issues there. Now let's grab our tools and get to work. All right, you can see kind of where the old uh, solar panel was here. Went ahead and removed that. Now, if this roof was a little bit younger, I would try and replace these hold, uh, these shingles with some holes with some new ones, but 17 years old, these things are getting a little brittle. 
rather than try and fight with uh, sliding these out from underneath here and pulling all the nails on these two rows, I just decided to slide some uh, stainless flashing underneath the whole area and glue the roof down with some lap cement and then fill in the holes with some roofing tar. And it may not look perfect, but uh, it definitely won't leak. And visually, I'm going to be covering these areas up with the new solar panels anyway, so it ought to work just fine. What I've done is I've measured over from this hole, which I can see from inside the building, to the next closest rafter right there. And we're going to sink that lag bolt in and then put that uh, flashing mount on there. It should be noted that this kit came with four rails and eight mounts. I'm only going to be doing two of the rails. My panels are narrow enough that uh, I don't need to mount the rest of the kit in order to get all three of them on there. So now that I've got the flashing mounts fixed, basically I just need to slide that bolt in there, slide it in here, put a nut on there. So we'll do that for this one, that one down there, and the two on the bottom. We can clamp our panels into place. Well, it's getting uh, dark up here, so I think I'm just about done filming. But I'm going to install this set of cables on the last panel and a pair of these uh, Y connectors on each one as well. You can see I've got the rails installed and then these uh, end clips here. I'm going to leave uh, just a couple inches of the rail sticking out so I can put my lightning protection on there. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for tonight. I'll have to go finish this up tomorrow morning. These little clamps are pretty cool. Basically, you would just extend this little T-connector down into a rail, turn it 90 degrees. This piece fits in there. And they have little uh, raised sharp edges that uh, basically bite into the aluminum frame on the solar panel and bond this aluminum frame to this which we're going to bond to a uh, cable down at the end and run down for our lightning protection. Pretty neat little setup. We'll get our last panel installed here and then get everything wired up. We'll finish torquing those by hand, but that's snug enough to hold the panels in place until I can go grab a torque wrench. All right, I got all three panels mounted. I got room for a fourth, and I'm probably going to order one. All I really need to do is order another panel, two more of these uh, T-clamp things right here, and another Y connector for the power, and uh, um, add another 100 watts. Obviously, I got room for it. I think I'll go ahead and get one coming. But for now, I've got everything hooked up. I'm going to uh, push these under the panels and zip tie them to that upper rail. And then these will go down through my cable entry gland to my charge controller. I've got my cable entry gland installed right there. I'm going to make a little standoff for my cables right here that uh, uh, screws to the underside of the fascia and just holds them off the roof and the, and the fascia there. But uh, yeah, we can go ahead and hook these things up and see how many watts we're getting in this winter afternoon sun. All right, looks like my panel voltage is 16.9 volts, and I'm getting 7.3 amps. So 17 times 7.3 is 124.1, so I'm getting about uh, yeah, 124 watts off of those 300 watt panels. You know, I'm, I'm fine with those numbers. Um, I didn't expect to get anywhere near the rating out of them, this being winter and the panels not being tilted perfectly to the south. Uh, during the summertime, they're actually a little bit more optimized for where the sun is. But uh, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, that's enough amps to... Uh, should be enough to step up the capacity of my system here, and I'll be adding another panel here shortly as soon as it shows up. Well, I had a chance to clean stuff up inside of the shed here. 
I just basically added some zip ties and sort of organized my snarl of wiring here. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, I added this Bluetooth module and it was 29 bucks on, on Amazon. I'll post the link in the video description, but basically it allows me to see what, uh, you know, some statistics and, and current stats on the charge controller uh, on a Bluetooth device using an app. So I'll pull that up right here on my phone and you can take a look at it. Yeah, so it shows that I'm connected right here and uh, real-time information is right here. You can see across the top I've got 17.1 volts, uh, 1.05 amps and 18 watts of charge power and the batteries are fully charged. So that's uh, it's basically just doing a maintenance charge there. And uh, yeah, at the bottom it uh, talks about the load right now and the since I'm standing here in the garden shed, uh, my LED lights and uh, whatever else is pulling 43 watts. So, And then you can look at uh, records on the next page. And uh, if you click on, and then if you tap on any one of these, it'll actually graph it out for you. And since I just plugged the unit in, there's really not a lot of data there, um, not enough to even graph yet. But uh, as time goes on, it should be recording more there. Uh, it looks like I need to change my battery type in here. Okay, well that wraps up the solar panel upgrade installation project. I hope you guys found some of that information useful. I know it's a fairly simple standalone off-grid sort of a system, but uh, yeah, um, I actually have some future videos planned for this system. Now, I mentioned it earlier, but my plan is to run my Starlink system off of the uh, solar system just around the clock. Now, with the limited sunshine that I have available here, the 400 watts worth of panels I have are not enough to keep that system uh, live 24 hours a day. So. What I've got planned is the installation of a digital timer that's going to turn the inverter off from midnight to 6 a.m. And those are times where I can pretty much be guaranteed to not be out in the shop working here. And that'll take six hours of power draw out of the whole, you know, out of the whole day. And at least according to some rough calculations, I think that's enough for the system I have out there to keep Starlink live around the clock even during the winter. So look for that coming up in a future video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.